give me your name and uh, hello I'm um, Cody do. Marks and what do you uh, what do you do for uh, jail guitar doors what I'm do you do in general what do you, what's what's oh your my. life like um, I don't golf uh, I really like playing music in prisons so back in November of 2015 Cody invited me to film a concert she said they were putting on at a men's prison. Well, we're very honored to have Cody Marks and her team from L.A. here. Uh, all right, so we're going to play a few original for you, a few originals for you guys now. That's cool. emotions you can think of can be expressed through music and so I think being able to play an instrument or even just elaborate musically on what your feelings are it's what like helps the healing and it also touches other people I was honestly expecting that like we'd go in there there'd be a line and there'd be like us on one side the prisoners on the other side mm -hmm. and we do our concert and then we leave but when we got there People started coming right up to Cody. They came up to all of us, like shaking hands. And it was just kind of like, immediately I was like, okay, here we go. <laughs> you know what I mean? It wasn't at all what I was expecting. But um, I was so surprised how kind and gracious and thankful all the guys were, you know, and that you're just talking to them and you just lose completely where you are. You know, it's like they're talking to you like you and I are talking. Yeah. You know, you can sing or laugh or dance or be silly or goofy, and it's, and it's okay in that context. Whereas on a, a violent prison yard, it's not okay, it's not appropriate. You know, you can't really act out, you can't be yourself, you can't sing or dance or laugh. But when you're in an environment like this, where there's an event with music, with people, it, it's like, you know, it's, you're okay, it's okay to be you. From a musician's standpoint, when I play with other guys, uh, we share the same like uh, emotions that we go through in a, in a song. You know, we all feel what we're playing, so it's uh, it's really dynamic that way. Where like, you know, one guy might come in and he's having a bad day or something, but we play a couple songs and it brightens up his day and he's he's feeling a lot better. And there's a little bit of that fellowship with your other friends or your other musicians, and it. Uh, I, I think it's just a, a good healing process, and, and it helps you deal with other people too, you know? The first people I met and talked to, the thought that was going through my head was, what the fuck are you doing here, brother? What the fuck are you doing here? It was people like me. I thought, I thought actually the sound guy did a great job, and I... Uh, after, after the gig, I mean, everything sounded great. Sound is not an easy gig. And I told him, hey man, when you get out, you can make some money at this. And his response was, I'm not getting out. 
I made these cards here for uh, an appreciation for the donation of the guitars. We made one for Adam, we made one for Wilbur, and one for me. And Cody. And look what else I got. Okay. Else I and then we also, I'm also donating some artwork to them. I got some new jewelry. And the guy that started the organization is a man named Wayne Kramer. I don't know if any of you ever heard that name. Old school, very good punk rocker, the godfather of punk. <laughs> My name is Wayne Kramer. I'm a 67-year-old man living in Los Angeles, California. And in the 1970s, I served a federal prison term. Music has the power to, uh, simply enough, transport you, to take you away from the place you are. But there's more to it than that. When we take a, a load of guitars into a prison, um, uh, it's with the understanding that these guitars are not gifts. We're not gifting anybody guitars. That the people that donate the money that pay for these guitars are sending a message to the men and women inside America's prisons. And the message is that they believe in them. That they believe, given the tools, given the incentive, that they will begin the hard work of positive change. I, I've been, been chorus since I was 18 years old, but I, I didn't pick up the guitar until I was 25. I'm 34 now. It's been my medicine. It's been it's something that's helped me cope with my anger issues, my, my issues with violence, and, and my issues with, with alcohol and drugs. It's my medicine. In, in the gang atmosphere, I, you know, I, was, I, I was always trying to, to unite people for, for, for destruction. Today I unite people for, 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 for positive movements of social change or, 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 or to perform. If a guy or a woman sits down and writes a song, tells a story, it changes them. It changes them on a funda fundamental level. They start to see themselves in the world differently. It puts them in touch with their humanity. Well, I can see from my balcony Your garden beside for some fruit trees well, I really enjoy the view of your garden I can see it's precious to you and I love to see the ladybugs play and the hummingbirds fly backwards and as I focus through the ficus I might just like us to harmonize like those birds of paradise um, I have a friend who's uh, worked in the California Department of Corrections as a recreation supervisor for 30 years. And he told me, if you educate a criminal, you've got an educated criminal. But you have to change at a fundamental level, at the heart level, of who they are. And the only thing that uh, he's ever seen change anybody was art and organized sports. The last song that we're going to play uh, is You Can't Always Get What You Want by the Rolling Stones. Yeah. Woo! Uh, there's only, it's only two, two chords, right? Two or three. Sometimes we use three. Three chords are the truth. Most of the time we just use two. Uh, so I want all 12 of those guitars to be being played while we're doing that song. Okay. You guys know we do this in C. So. To F. Like you know, Rob Davis set. Oh, man, no, wait, hold on. I want to hear. All right, band, cut out. Let me hear the guitars. Excellent. That is excellent. Okay, when it goes to the chorus, it goes C to F. express yourself creatively and how to express yourself appropriately through that and to get in touch with those emotions and be able to communicate those in your daily life. So uh, yeah, that's where I'm at with that.
a future existed for me. I didn't think anyone cared about me. I didn't care about myself. I had no clue that the, the world and the universe is so ginormous and huge and people are so beautiful and wonderful. So if you know that you're going to do life in the big house, if you still decide to make yours and the people around you lives better, that's saying something. And I became authentic. This is who I truly am, right? I could be caring to be caring. When I got to this prison, I became a mentor in the substance of this program. And every day I get to help people. Every day I get to reach my hand out and help somebody come out of that darkness. And for me, that's the recovery side of it. That's my service. That's my way to give back. There's, there's not a lot of ways I can give back. Society has this like stigma with the prisons, you know what I mean? Kind of almost like, well they laid their bed, they made their beds, so they should lie in it, you know, and they can't be reformed, they can't be changed. And it's like, maybe that's a story for some of them, but the ones that are looking for change, are looking for hope, you know, what better way to give them that outlet than music? Rehabilitation isn't the answer for me. Healing is the actual answer. It's to rehabilitate is to be returned to a normal life. Well, I don't have a normal life to return to, nor have I ever had a normal life, nor do I want to be returned to it. I actually want to be healed from it. Uh, for me, I could look at this as prison, or I could look at it as college. And I, that's what this has become to me. This become, it has become the university where I came to educate myself, where I came to nurture the talents that I had in me that I never tapped into, because I never took the time to look inside. Ninety-five percent of America's prisoners are coming home someday, and they're going to live next door to you and me. And we're just going to stand next to them in the line at the supermarket, and we're going to sit next to them in the movie theater, and we're going to sit next to them in restaurants. And who do I want sitting next to me? Somebody who has been inculcated in a world of racism and violence and defeat for decades, or someone who was given the tools to look inward, to find out what the heck went wrong. Where did I make my mistake?
So the last thing I want to say is that when it comes to the incarcerated, I, I think a lot of people just hope that it's a problem that they can ignore and it's going to go away. And so consequently, groups like Jail Guitar Doors have a hard time, you know, continuing to do what they do. So I encourage you to go to jailguitardoors.org and donate if you can. And if you can't, please just, just tell somebody about it or show them this doc and just spread the word. And um, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this documentary. Thank you.